May 2013 C2, start off with a geometric series question. Um, first bit, nice thing to get you into paper, only one mark, find a common ratio. Well, the ratio is obviously equal to the ratio between any two consecutive terms. Well, the second term is 12, the first term is 18, so the common ratio is two thirds. Okay. And B, uh, find the value of P. Well, therefore, we can therefore say that P, we can see that fairly clearly there that P is going to be 8. Basically, it would be 12 times 2 thirds because that's our common ratio now, which is 8. Only one mark, but uh, still uh, worth having. So, the sum of the uh, first 15 terms giving you answer to three decimal places. Well, there is a formula for finding the sum, and it's given in the formula book, and I shall quote it here. Okay, so there we have our formula. Um, so this isn't going to be very difficult because we just got we just literally put the fir first terms in here. Eighteen is our first term. Uh, common ratio is two thirds. Uh, the number of terms is 15. All over one minus two thirds. And then it's just a case of being careful that we put it into our calculator. Um, it does ask for three decimal places. So, so we better give three decimal places and we get the answer 53.8. 7, 7. Do read those questions, those bits very carefully. Okay, now on to the next question. Okay, no, nice easy binomial. Uh, still should be fairly straightforward at this point in the paper. Um, don't be too surprised if you get something tricky, but they do normally try and make them more approachable. And this is your straightforward binomial. It's only got power 4, so so really we know our, co our binomial coefficients, our NCR numbers. We can write it out from Pascal's triangle or whatever, because I think this is a case where it's perfectly okay to write your numbers, or if you might even know them. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now, once we start going beyond, say, five or six and maybe Pascal's triangle isn't the way to go but here we got we've got the coefficients easily and you might even know them because we see them uh, the same thing to come up uh, so there's our binomial coefficients so um, that we're going to put in our values of NCR so now uh, let's just uh, let's go back now I don't think we need that anymore we can put that in when they arise so okay um, now we've got 2 plus 3x to the 4 is equal to 2 to the 4 plus 2 to the 3, 3x to the 1, and that num first number from the Pascal triangle there is 4, plus the next pa number Pascal's triangle number there was 6. Now th that's 2 squared 3x squared okay um, and then we've got a 4 again because that was our appropriate number from Pascal's triangle 2 to the 1 3x cubed plus our final term is 3x to the 3 uh, to the 3x to the 4 Okay, so we should be able to write these numbers out now. Um, this one here, 2 to the power 4 is 16, plus 4 times 8 times 3x, plus 6 times 4 times 9x squared, plus 4 times... Oh, there's a slight mistake in what I wrote there, so it's a bit unfortunate because that's a common mistake that students make. It should have been that. So that's 2 times by 27x cubed plus 
x to the 4. Um, something I forgot to mention also before, it's worth just, when we've done our line here, just checking that it scans right. The powers of 2 have to go downwards. So the powers of 2 start off with 4, and go to 3, to 2, to 1, and obviously to 0, which I haven't written. Um, and likewise, the other ones go up. We've got 0 power to power 1, to power 2, to power 3, to power 4. Another check, of course, is that the, any particular term, the powers have to add up to 1. So we've got here we've got 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. 2 plus 2 equals 4. 1 plus 3 equals 4. We have 4 there, 4 at the beginning. So I mentioned that once we're doing it. It's one thing, just do spend some time checking that's all correct. Anyway, we're nearly done with this. So that gives us uh, 16 there plus 12 times 8, which is 96 x there plus 6 times 4 times 9. Oh, I've done something else a bit unfortunate there. I mean, we would have retrieved it there, but we really mean that, don't we? 6 times 4 times 9, which is equal to 216x squared, plus 4 times 2 times 27, which is also equal to 216x to the cubed, plus 81 x to the 4. Okay, so for the second part, they, we really don't want to be doing this again. It don't, whenever it says write down, it means literally they think you can write it down. Well, the two series are just the same, exactly the same. Power 4, 2 and 3 as our numbers inside, but the only difference is a minus. And that all that means is we're going to have an alternating sign. So, whereas the other ones, all the terms are positive, here we will have an alternating sign so it's 16 take away 96x plus 216x squared minus 216x cubed plus 81x to the 4. It really wasn't the intention to do that whole thing again. Okay, right now on to question 3. Okay, so question 3. Um, We've got a factor theorem for the first bit. We're told that x minus 3 is a factor. That basically means that f3 must be equal to 0. That's going to enable us to work out a. So f3 is equal to 2 times 3 cubed minus 5 3 squared plus a times 3 plus 18. Okay, so that gives us 54 minus, nine, minus 45 plus 3a plus 18. And we're told this is equal to 0. Okay, so that tells us that's equal to 0. And that therefore gives us a equals minus 9, which is what we're asked to show anyway. So we know that a is minus 9. Part B it's factor theorem. Uh, we now know that x minus 3 is a factor of 2x squared, 2x cubed, minus 5x squared, pl minus 9x plus 18. And it goes into, we know there's a factor of x minus 3. Right, now, many of you may do some form of long division here. Um, either the bus stop way or I see the grid way as well. You could do either of those too. I'm not going to do either of them here because if, um, because I think really it's a bit long-winded, but it's up to you. I would personally just, well, look at this by inspecting the middle term. We know that that there has got to be equal to, so that should be 18 there, we know that this number here should be equal to minus 6, so that mark, because minus 3 times minus 6 needs to be plus 18. We know that this term here has to be 2x cubed, 
Okay, so now it's a case of knowing what the middle term needs to be. And what I would be saying is, well, if we've got minus 5x squared, we we should set, we need it to, to work out uh, what the x squared would be, or even the minus 9x should be. Uh, we need to work out the middle term so that we get a minus 9x there. Well, um, let's work with the minus 9x. We've got minus 6x from these two here from this is going to get give us minus 6x when we multiply those two we want to get minus 9x in other words an extra minus 3x and we're times them by minus 3 so that's plus x just a quicker way of doing it um, by inspection really thinking out and yeah you're you're almost thinking what must the middle term be so that I get minus 9x and I would then check to see if I get minus 5x squared also from this well let's have a look I'm going to check this now because uh, just in case it uh, works out to be wrong obviously I've made a mistake there that's be 2x squared um, well let's have a check so we've got that there gives us minus 6x squared and this here gives us plus x squared, which would give us the minus 6x squared that we require. So it's quicker if you can do it. Otherwise, you're into your bus shelter or your grid. I'm not going to do those here because you'll see plenty of places where you can find out how to do that. OK, so um, now we now need to see if the actual this factor itself factorizes. Um, well, if it does, we're obviously going to have a 2x and an x. And then we need to have a different signs on here. We need minus 6 to get a plus x. Now, how could we get that? We could get it by, if we put a plus 3 here, and a my, that would give us plus 3x there, and a minus 2. I think I've got the signs the wrong way around. My, that would give me minus 4x and plus 3x. So I think I need to change the signs. That now makes it right. That gives me plus 4x and minus 3x. And so it's factorized completely for part B. OK, so now we've got a slight variation on this. I uh, wanted to put obviously something a little bit different in. But it's not too bad, really. We've got GY. equals to 2 times 3 to the 2y minus 5 to the 3 times 2y or to power 2y minus 9 to the 3y plus 18. Right now we're trying to solve that equals to naught. Well if we let we can see the similarity hopefully between these two basically it's the same except x is equal to 3 to the 3y so if we let x be equal to 3 to the y so I should say that gives us what we want so we've got that e so we have 2x cubed let's give it a bracket there 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 9x plus 18 equals 0 and we know we've already factorized that from the previous question equals 0 so we have um, x equals 3 x equals 3 over 2 and x equals minus 2 Right, so we have now, we'll just go back to the actual thing, 3 to the y equals 3, and 3 to the y equals 3 over 2, and 3 to the y equals negative 2. Right, now this one is just not doable. This one here can't be done. You can't have the, the index of something make negative, or if you want to look at it, you do the log of it. It can't be negative, so this one yields to no solutions from that one because it's negative. You can't can't work that way. 
Uh, we can see by subtraction here that y equals 1. Here, what we probably would want to be doing here is saying that y is equal to, to undo uh, that, we can just say it's log to the base 3 of 3 over 2. And that gives us 0 0.369. Oh, it's asked for two decimal places, so we better be. So that's uh, 0.37. Applicable 0.37. Okay, on to the next question. Okay, so it's a trapezium rule question. Uh, there's a missing value from the table, which we just put 1.5 in there. So that would give us 1.538. One mark for that, so please don't get it wrong. Just use the calculator properly. Um, now, the trapezium rule says that this is a, it's written something like this in the formula book. Might not be exactly like this. Is approximately equal to h over 2 y0 plus y1, yn plus 2 times y1, y2 up to yn minus 1 with h being equal to b minus a over n n is the number of strips the number of strips here will be equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it'll be 6 because it's always one fewer than the number of ordinates so we've got six strips but to be honest we don't need this formula to work out h because h would be just the length of these what we've got to think imagine is this is split up into six strips here i think i've got it right there it's not very accurate but each one of these would have a distance between them of 0 0.5 here each one of them equal and that's our h because remember our trapezium our trapeziums here are kind of tipped that way so h is this value here so h is 0 0.5 um, it might be worth thinking of this in it's obviously not what it's uh, how it's written in the formula book but why not is just the first ordinate it'll be this one okay yn is the last ordinate which will be this one and this here is the sum of the middle ordinates. So first, last, sum of all of these. And we, we have h is equal to 0 0.5 because each one of these is 0 0.5. So it's just a case of putting these numbers into the formula so the appropriate the approximate of 3 to the north 5 of x squared plus 1 dx is approximately equal to h over 2 which is 0 0.5 over 2 the first plus the last plus 2 times the sum of all those middle ones 4 plus 2.5 plus 1.538 plus 1 plus 0 0.690 okay and when we work that out just do take care check it a couple of times on your calculator if you have one of these calculators that uh, it's the silver casio you might choose to put it in there um and see what it is what the actual answer is of course it might not be the same as this because this is a, a rough approximation whereas your calculator will be more accurate but you will at least know if you're wildly out um so there we go 6.24 it's four marks right now the slightly unusual thing about the next part of the question is it then changes the function slightly but it only shifts it up we here we've got the same bit here with it being moved up by four so effectively we've got this same graph here but 
with it being moved up by four here yeah. so basically we are adding the area of this would be equal to 12 that extra area we've worked out this area here from what well, we've worked out an approximation of it which is our 6.24 and we're just adding 12 to that because it's shifted upwards. Uh, alternative way of thinking about this, of course, um, if you didn't like that, if you don't like the visual approach, we can do a bit of a little bit of basic algebra, really. <coughs> so. This is if you do, this is probably the quickest if we can see it. But if you don't like that, then we're going to have to do something like this. Split it into two. Okay, and we know this is our 6.234 and you should easily be able to work this out to be 12. Take your pick. Okay, so anyway, the answer is... It's approximately equal to 12 plus 6.24, which is equal to 18.24. Okay, so that's uh, the question four done. Okay, so now on to question five. Okay, so it's a raging question. Sometimes I find students find these a bit scary, but really, they're all pretty okay, really. We, um, we've got... And a, a triangle here which we can easily work out the area of that triangle and we've got the uh, we've got a sector here we can air it, find the area of that and we can add the two together okay because we've got the nice diagram and it wants the area of the whole garden so we're adding these two together together so the area of triangle is a formula for that which is half a b sign c basically what that means is if we have ever have an angle here and the two and the two sides next to it the area will be equal to these two sides multiplied times by the sine of the angle a half of that so basically that's what we need we've got a 12 we've got a 23 and we've got the angle in between for that so that's easy enough so that equals to half times by 12 times by 23 times by sine 0.64 do change your mode to radians it is very important that you do so um, that uh, don't be tempted to convert to degrees in these questions it makes it more long-winded and more difficult to pick up the method marks in in this type of question working radians changing mode of calculator to radians anyway this uh, is equal equal to 82.412 and a lot of other stuff store it in your calculator perhaps and then we've got the area of this sector And that's equal to half r squared theta. Well, theta in this case is this angle, which would be equal to pi, because the whole of this is pi, minus 0 0.64. So the area is equal to half r squared, r is obviously 12, times by pi minus 0 0.64. And that equals to... 180.1146 and a load of other stuff. Let me store it in the calculator perhaps. So the total area, if we add those two together, um, 82.412 plus 180. Point one one four blah 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 equals to and as it asks for a particular degree of acid yes to one decimal place 
So when we look at that, we'll get that equal to 262.5 meters squared. Okay, so there we go. That's the um, that's the first part. Part B isn't really going to trouble us either, I don't think. It's just this equivalent, but with areas. Again, that's actually even less, um, slightly less, if anything. Um, so, however, we've got most of what we need to know here. We can work out this length easily by r theta because we know that this angle is pi minus 6, 4. So we know that E, D, C, the arc, is equal to 12 times pi minus 0 0.64. Okay, and that equals to approximately 30.0191. One nine one one dot 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 dot. Okay, so again, you might choose to use a memory on your calculator to avoid rounding errors. Um, right now we've got two of the other sides, twelve here and twenty-three, but we need this side. So we're now working with this triangle. So this is where quite a few of the marks are going to be given because we've got to use the cosine rule in this diagram in this question. A E squared now the cosine rule is given in the formula book it's basically I often think of it as Pythagoras's theorem but with a few adjustment with a kind of adjustment here for it not being right angled you'll notice if a was 90 that becomes zero so you end up with Pythagoras's theorem um, so um, here AE is equal to our A and we've got BC, BC here and our angle in between is equal to 0 0.64. So we've got AE is equal to 23 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 23 times 12 times co cosine of 0 0.64. Okay, and that when we work all that out and square root it, don't forget to square root it. That's right, a, a squared uh, comes to the whole thing squared comes to about 230 and some other stuff. So AE is equal to. 15.17376 blah 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 okay so that means that the perimeter is equal to 23 plus 12 plus our 30.019 plus this which is 15.17 okay and if we work that out around it to one decimal place we'll get 80.2 okay so that's our final answer to part b okay so we're now on to question six okay so it's an integration question um first part is just recognizing that uh, we've got a two here and a minus four here from the factorized form so we should be able to recognize where it passes through the uh, through the x-axis because y equals zero at those points which would correspond to x equals two and minus four let's write it separately to be safe okay nothing more to be done there okay part b it's integration it, the, the main thing to recognize here is that when we integrate between two and naught for the function we are going to expect 
a negative answer because it's below the axis. So we interpret that and we basically modulate it. We make it, we, we say the, and the air force is therefore positive. So that is equal to, let's do it first of all. Um, let's multiply the whole thing out. Multiplying that out comes to x cubed plus uh, the, the middle term here would be 4x minus 2x, so that's 2x, that's 2x squared minus 8x dx. So let's integrate the terms x cubed over 3 plus 2 over 3x, so that's x to the that's not true. That's x to the 4 over 4 plus 2 over 3 x cubed minus 8 over 2 x squared, which is obviously equal to 4 x squared. Okay, uh, now we can put our limits in. So we can put the limits in 2 to naught. We get equals to 2 to the 4 over 4 plus 2 thirds 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 squared minus a load of zeros. Zero, 0, 4 over 4 plus two thirds, not really necessary to write this at this. Do bear in mind when we do things in C2 though, C3, that just be, and it, just because the value of X is equal to zero, doesn't mean that this, the integral part here would be zero, but it will be in these cases where you have polynomials. Okay, so that's uh, zero. So that equals to 16 over four, so that's four plus two thirds of eight, so that's 16 over three, minus four times four, which is equal to 16. So that equals to 16 over three minus eight, which is equal to minus, 20, minus eight over three. Just notice the obvious arithmetic slip there, for those of you who are thinking I'd go mad. Okay, so you would be used to me doing things like that. So that's minus 12, and so that gives me minus 144 plus 16. I think that works out to be equal to minus 6 and 2 thirds. Okay, so that's minus 6 and 2 thirds. So that means the area is six and two thirds. So we also do the same for the integral from naught to minus four of x cubed plus two x squared minus eight x dx. And we've already integrated the inside of this as x to the four over four plus two three x cubed minus four x squared from naught to minus 4. So we're going to have a lot of noughts. All this stuff works out to be naught. You can write naught if you like, because it will be. But just be warned that when you come on to things like power functions and other functions, uh, trig functions next year, that you shouldn't assume that input in zero will give you zero. It will do in these cases. So take away well, not into, uh, the integral of minus 4 to the 4 over 4 plus 2 thirds minus 4 cubed minus 4 times minus 4 squared and that equals to 42 and 2 thirds. So that means that the total area, is those two added together, which 
which is equal to the uh, the six and two thirds plus the forty two and two thirds, which gives me forty nine and a third. Okay, so that's question six done. Let's have a look at question seven. Okay, it's a logs question. It's not. Uh, some people get put off by logs, but this one's not too bad. Remember our rules of logs. Uh, the ones that uh, let's write them all down uh, log x plus log y is equal to log x y the base has to be the same for all of these log x minus log y is equal to log x over y and n log x is equal to log x to the n and we need to be able to work with these in both directions so we need to be able to get condense a log and it will expand it going this way in this case we're going to expand uh, we're going to take the logs over to the other side so let's have a look at the actual question log 2 to the 2x uh, just writing the question down minus 3 is equal to uh, means that log 2 to the 2x minus log 2 to the 5x plus 4 equals minus 3 I might ch change uh, choose to change our line so I've got a positive don't have to but it might help in the next line So now I'm going to use the rule of logs, that's this one here. So we're going to bring these two together. Log 5x plus 4 over 2x equals 3 on the base 2. Right, so now undoing a log, that means that 5x plus 4 over 2x must be equal to 2 cubed so that means that 5x plus let's write it up here 5x plus 4 over 2x equals 8 so that gives me 5x plus 4 equals 16x so that gives me 11x equals to 4 x is equal to 4 over 11 okay so not too bad uh, for that question uh, question b is not too bad either again we're using the rules of logs Right, so we need to bring this power up first. So that's log a2 cubed equals 5. Okay. So now we have, uh, that's basically equal to 8. So that gives us log a of 8y equals to five. Okay, so that must mean that a to, a to the 5 is equal to 8y, undoing the log. So therefore, y is equal to a to the 5, one eighth of that. Okay, and that's the end of that question because that's what it wanted us to do it said express y in terms of a and that's done okay so now on to the next question okay so here we've got a tan question um a trick trick question involving tan and a little bit of trig identities as well um right we've got tan x minus 40 equals 1.5 well, 
let's work out the principal value first of all uh, because we've got uh, then we can, can add 40 onto that to get one solution so we, we've got principal value is inverse tan of 1.5 so that's 56.3 but for the tan graph, for the tan situation, we, we can get all the other ones by adding or subtracting 180. So let's write this out. X minus 40 equals to 56.3. Take away 180 from that. And we get minus 123.7. Add 180 to that. And we get 236.4. Okay, so when we look at this now, we're going to add 40 to each of these answers. I do have a sense if we added one to either side, we're definitely outside our range. If we did a solution there and there, it's not going to be one that's within our range, so we don't need it. This is certainly enough. So we've got x is equal to 40 plus minus 123.7. So that would give you 83.7. And 56.3 plus 40, which is equal to 96.3. And if we obviously this one is already outside our range and we're adding 40 to it so it will be already outside our range and that's all of our solutions there okay so we just added 140 to get uh, for 180 it's the easiest one to work with is tan because we're just adding 180 to any of our solutions here okay Right, now the second one is doing a bit of identities and then solving at the end. So let's just do the identities bit first. Okay, let's go back to blue. Okay. We've got sine theta tan theta is equal to 3 cos theta plus 2. So that means it's sine theta times by sine theta over cos theta, an important identity you need to know is, ta is a tan theta or tan x equals sine x over cos x. So we're going to use that here. It's equal to 3 cos theta plus 2. Okay. Um, now we can then multiply that out. Sine squared theta cos theta is equal to 3 cos theta plus 2. Okay, now multiply through by cos theta and we get sine squared theta is equal to 3 cos squared theta plus 2 cos theta. Right, so now we need to replace the sine because we, we want it all in terms of cos. So an, another important identity you need to know is sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So that means we can replace sine squared theta with 1 minus cos squared theta. Bringing that all over to the other side, or over, all over to one side, we get 4 cos squared theta plus 2 cos theta minus 1 equals 0. Okay. Right, now, okay, so we're on part B. It's uh, not too bad so far. But the first thing to look for here is does this factorise? If you don't like looking at lots of causes and angles, we can just say that cos theta let it be equal to c okay so uh, does it factorize and it doesn't take long i hope to convince you that that will not factorize um, 
So we can use a quadratic formula. So because it doesn't factorize. So often we used to, we're expecting these things too, but it doesn't this time. So it's two minus two plus or minus the square root of four squared minus four times a, which is four times by minus one over eight. Okay. And when we work that out, that gives us uh, C equals to 0 0.3090 or minus 0 0.8090. Okay, we've got the two solutions from uh, both of those and so we've got to follow them both because both of them are possible neither of them at fall outside the range minus one to one so we've got to follow these both so if we follow the cos beta is equal to 0 0.3090 first of all work out the principal value um principal value inverse cos a point three oh nine oh seventy two degrees okay so that gives us seventy two degrees for one of them the other one we we can either do uh we can say that theta let's just write it out seventy six that means there'll also be one of minus 76 because of the way they cause that's out sometimes our secondary one we can just say that's our principal value another solution is minus our principal value and then we can just add 360 to that oh. so the angle i got was 72 not 76 Let's write it out again, 72 and minus 72 are two solutions. And we can just add multiples of, three, uh, we can add 360 to each one of those to get out any further solutions. Add 360 to minus 72 and you'll get 144. You'll get yes, 288 degrees. And that's all of them. So we've added 360 to that to get them. We could have, by the way, got our secondary solution here to just do 360 minus principal value and got the second one that way. So it uh, doesn't really matter. The main thing is you work out your principal value and find another solution. And the other one, this is sometimes called the secondary solution, we can either do the negative of it because it's an even function or we can do 360 minus it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, notice we've got a, a number outside our range here. It doesn't matter so long as we can, as long as we list the ones that are in our range, that's fine. I might list them uh, at the end anyway. Right, so here we, we're solving for the second bit. Cos theta is equal to minus 0 0.8090. Okay. So inverse cos minus 0 0.8090. That gives me 144. So principal value is 144. So we have theta is equal to 144. That's our principal value. 180 minus that, uh, sorry, not 180. The negative of that, our secondary one would be minus 144. But of course we've got another one which added, which we add 360 to that one. which is 216, which is basically 316 minus our principal value. So our values are theta is equal to, let's write them in order, 72, 144, 216, and 288 degrees. Okay, and that's uh, question eight done. Let's now look at question nine. So nine doesn't look too bad. Straightforward differentiation question with some powers in it. Uh, maybe a little bit of fiddling around with bits of algebra, I suspect. But uh, let's just get on with it. 
we've got this as our function but to make it in a more convenient form to differentiate we will think of it as this so differentiate that we get dy by dx is equal to 2x minus 16 x to the negative half and the 20 goes now for stationary points we need dy by dx to be equal to zero basically the gradient has got to be flat okay so it's got to be horizontal so dy by dx is zero so that gives us that 2x minus 16 x to the minus half equals zero okay so i might as well half take out the half here so it's 8x to the negative half is equal to zero all right um, now i could multiply through by x to the half or take the eight to the other side that's what most students seem to like doing so i'll do it like that then multiply through by x to the or let's um what rest this that's over x to the half i can then let's do it over here say that x times by x to the half equals eight so we'll get x to the three over two equals eight this is on a calculator paper anyway but we could do it without a calculator here because we can just say that x is equal to eight to the two thirds because we're undoing we're undoing that so that equals to two thirds that's equal to four we could work out that without a calculator without too much problem so then when x when x equals four y equals 4 squared minus 32 times by the square root of 4 plus 20 so that's 16 minus 64 plus 20 so that equals to minus 28 so that means we've got to have a stationary point at 4 and minus 28 okay so then so we've got that then the next part is to determine the nature is it a maximum or minimum or possibly a point of inflection but actually in virtually all questions we see here they are maximums or minimums because uh, that's when the sine of d2y by the x squared determines it absolutely whether it's a maximum or a minimum if it is one of those two so um dy by dx uh, let's differentiate again we've got dy by dx d2y by dx squared is this bit differentiated again so that equals to 2 minus 60 oh it's going to be plus isn't it plus 8 x to the minus 3 over 2 because it's 16 times minus a half which is positive 8 that's 8 to the minus 3 over 2 um, now at this point we only need to to know whether it's positive or negative so when x equals 4 d2y by dx squared is equal to 2 plus 8 times 4 to the minus 3 over 2 now if it makes you feel better work it out but in fact we don't need to here we or we can just argue that that's greater than zero because it is we've only got positives involved in that so that means that it's equal to and that means because it's positive and it's a stationary point that means mean that 4 minus 28 is a minimum okay 
on to the final question, I think. Okay, so a bit of circles to finish off with. Um, unbelievable that uh, right at the end of the paper, they're going to give away three marks so easily. Um, don't assume that three marks will take three minutes. Sometimes it'll take less than a minute. And this one is a such a case in point. We've got that uh, the radius is five and it touches the x-axis at zero nine here. So we know, we know that the center, because the radius is 5, is equal to minus 5 and 9. It's not particularly difficult to work that out. So the equation is x plus 5 squared plus y minus 9 squared is equal to 5 squared. And that is it. That's all we need. Uh, don't need any more than that. Three marks done. Um, question ten. We shouldn't complain, but sometimes we can be. You can be surprised. It's where confidence comes in. The less confident student might think that there's a lot to do there because we're later on in the paper. How come they're giving away marks like that? But they have. So a bit more tricky. Part B though. Part B is. Um, so in a line through eight point P minus eight seven is a tangent to the circle at the point T. Find the length of point of PT. Right, so let's just draw a diagram. First of all, so it may you may have escaped your notice here, but in fact this could be two point this could be two here. Okay, could be two points there. Okay, but it doesn't really matter because it's the length of it that we're interested in. So let's just ignore the bottom, the top one there. Right, and we've got this triangle. So it's just see, it's seeing that the that we've got a triangle here. Uh, we know that the radius of this thing is equal to five. Okay. Um, and we can work out the length from P to the center of the circle. So um, if we call that C, PC is equal to um, the square root of the difference in the x coordinate squared. So the difference in the x coordinate squared is 8 take away negative 5 squared plus the difference in the y coordinate squared, which is 9 take away negative 7 squared. So that equals to, when we work that out, it equals to the 4, 2, 5. Okay, square root of 4, 2, 5 is the length from here to here. Is the square root of 4, 2, 5. Just using the distance formula for the circle. Uh, for not for nothing to do with a circle, in fact, it's just to do with the distance between two points. Okay, that's the distance formula, basically a Pythagoras theorem thing. All right, so now we're using Pythagoras's theorem again because we know we know that PC squared, I'm calling C the center of the circle here, is equal to four two five. So if we call this distance. Um, this is the point T here, PT squared plus 5 squared must be equal to 425. That's Pythagoras, or let's write PC squared, which is 425. So here we go, PT squared plus 25. So PT squared is equal to 400. So that gives us that PT equals 20. That is the length between the two. Again, a little bit of a, I suppose that's visualizing it, the fact that it's a tangent. It's tempted to think, can I work that coordinate out? There are ways of doing it, but we don't need it. Don't need it here. We were only asked for the length. So that's all we needed. Uh, so we had to find the, the length from this point to this point here using uh, finding the distance between two points using Pythagoras and then using the fact that we have a right angle triangle here because uh, of an important circle theorem and then we've worked it out. Okay, just done in under an hour, the paper. Uh, 
didn't seem like the, perhaps the hardest CT we've ever seen. Okay, there we go. Hope you enjoyed it.